There's so much information and so many ideas flying around the world of sales training these days, particularly around the basics. And so I think that there are different levels of basics, right? There's the real basics, like how do you look someone in the eye and shake their hand? That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about real hardcore sales training basics. We're going to assume that you're already a human being who knows how to make eye contact, who knows how to smile and all of that. I'm talking about what do you do to get in front of your ideal prospects and what do you do once you're actually in front of them to really maximize the likelihood that you're actually going to close the sale. It's so important to get these little pieces right. So in this video, I'm going to show you the 11 sales training basics that beginners must master. Check it out. Number one, what you've been told before is wrong. I promise you that this is the case. Whatever someone has told you in the past about what you should be doing in sales is probably wrong. Now, unless that person is a really badass sales manager or salesperson who knows everything about selling, if you're just going based off what most salespeople think or what most managers think, or even quite frankly, what most CEOs think about sales, that stuff is wrong. There is so much old school crap out there that if you just commit to doing the opposite of what most people are telling you, you're going to be way better off. But of course, what you really want to do is go so much deeper and understand exactly what truly does work in selling. Number two, be the complete opposite of what you think a salesperson is. This builds off of that first idea, which is that most of what the media and popular culture, and quite frankly, our professions tell us what a salesperson really is, is wrong. Thinking of the gregarious, backslapping, funny guy or gal as the archetypal salesperson is just silly. In today's world, what makes an effective salesperson is someone who can read people, who can follow a process, who can engage people in a conversation using a systematic approach. Being the opposite of what you think the average salesperson is is so key because those people are actually hurting their own sales. Number three, talk is cheap. Most salespeople think that having the gift of gab is the best thing that we can all have when it comes to selling. But the reality is, is that your prospects don't want to hear you talk. They don't care about you. They don't care about your product. They don't care about your company. And they certainly don't care about whatever BS you or another salesperson has to say about all of those different topics combined into one. What they care about is solving the challenges that they are dealing with right now. So us doing all this talking is just a waste of time. They don't care. What we need to do is engage them in a conversation, a two-way conversation, where they're seeing value that we're providing, but at the same time, they are sharing insight into what they most care about. Get your prospects talking in a way that they're really engaged in the conversation and then you're going to start closing so many more sales. Number four, have a system. As a relatively newer salesperson, one of the best things that you can do is have a real selling system to follow. If you're just making it up as you go, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Follow a systematic approach to selling, whether it's my approach or someone else's approach. I don't really care, but what I care is that you have a system. Obviously you want to have a system that has been proven to work in today's world, but have that systematic approach. So that way you're not thinking next time you're in front of a prospect, what am I going to say next? Or what question am I going to ask? Or geez, I, I wish I knew what I should be doing in this situation. When you have a system, you know exactly what you need to do next. Number five, do your homework. Show your prospects through personalization that you understand who they are, that you've done your research. Now this doesn't mean that before you make every phone call, you need to do 25 minutes of research. Of course not. At our company, we have a team of people who do our research for us, and so that way we have it ready to go, and we don't actually have to do the research, but we're showing we did our homework. But you want to know things about their company. You want to know things about them. You want to know about their background, about what they care about, articles that they've shared. So many of the key ways that you can do your homework are all within LinkedIn. Ideally, using LinkedIn Navigator, you can get so much valuable information and insight on your prospects just by spending a couple of of minutes really looking through their profile, understanding what they most care about. Number six, 
ask questions. Now, of course, not all questions are created equal, so it doesn't mean just ask any questions, but within a systematic approach, you need to be asking questions. You need to be engaging your prospects, getting them doing the talking. If you are doing all of the talking in a selling situation, which is Quite often the case for a lot of salespeople, you're in trouble. The data shows that top performing salespeople are doing a lot more digging, are asking valuable, insightful questions to determine whether there's a fit. Ask more questions. Number seven, don't be afraid to lose sales. I find that so many salespeople are terrified with the idea of losing a sale. And you know what? It happens. It's not a big deal. I lose sales. Any top performing salesperson loses sales. It's not the end of the world. And quite frankly, living in fear of losing a sale is going to make you so much weaker, so much softer with a prospect. And what you need to be is you need to be completely unafraid of losing a sale. And when you're actually unafraid of losing a sale, your prospect immediately feels it. They don't feel creeped out by a salesperson who clearly needs to close this sale in order to pay their rent. Being unafraid of losing sales is going to make you so much stronger in your selling. Number eight, be a peer, not a servant. There are so many salespeople that feel like they need to put prospects up on a pedestal. What they're really doing is not putting the prospect on the pedestal, but they're actually getting down and they're bowing down like you would expect a servant in a movie. We need to be in a position where we see ourselves as true peers to our prospects. So don't treat your prospects like they're this super special person and they need to be treated like a, a god or a goddess. Instead, talk to them like a peer. I mean, don't be overly casual and, and callous and curse and do these things necessarily, but you want to talk to them as if they're just another person, someone who puts on their pants one leg at a time. When you behave like a peer to your prospects, prospects feel that and it's disarming and it makes them more comfortable. Being that peer, not a servant. Number nine, stop persuading. Your prospects do not need to be persuaded to do business with you. What they need is a professional salesperson who will determine whether there's a fit, period. Your prospects either need or do not need what you have. There's no way to persuade someone who doesn't need what you have to buy what you have. That's stupid. That's just dumb. It doesn't make sense. Don't try to persuade your prospects to do business with you. Instead, engage them in a conversation, ask them powerful, useful, systematic questions to determine what's going on in their world. What are the challenges? What are the concerns that they are having? What are the goals that are most important that they accomplish? When you get to those questions and then weave in what it is you're selling, now you never have to be persuading someone or convincing someone to do business with you. Doing business with you is just going to be a natural extension of them solving their problems. Stop persuading. Number 10, always be learning. Learning is a lifelong journey. If you stop learning, you're in trouble. And with sales, so much is changing that the second we stop learning, we just immediately get ourselves into trouble. At our company, we're always reading new books, new strategies, implementing new courses, new ideas. Always be learning new ideas. Especially if you're relatively new in sales, you need to really master selling. If you're here for real and you're doing this and this is something that you are committed to doing over the long term, always be learning. Read new books on selling. Read new books on business. Take courses. Educate yourself on your craft. Think about it. If you were a lawyer, you would have had to go to three or four years of law school, and then you have continuing education credits. In sales, there's no such thing. So it's on us to continually be learning and getting better. Always be learning. Number 11, never get comfortable, ever. The second you get comfortable with where you are is when you get into trouble. I see this in the life cycle of salespeople all the time. You see someone who comes out the gate and they're actually doing really well. And then they start to make money and then they feel really good and they start to get comfortable. And so what do they do? They stop doing what it was they were doing that got them to where they were. And then they get themselves into trouble. We never want to get ourselves to the point where we're super comfortable. We always want to be a little uncomfortable, a little nervous. We always want to be looking over our shoulder thinking, okay, if I stop doing what I'm doing, 
this is all going to fall apart. Now, I don't mean that in a way where we want to be paranoid, but we never want to get completely comfortable. We want to constantly be pushing, to be striving, to stretch outside of our comfort zone, to try things that we haven't tried before. The second we get comfortable is the second that we start to get worse. So there are the 11 sales training basics that beginners must master. And if you enjoyed this video, that I have an awesome free training on the data-driven approach to help you crush Crush your sales goals. Just click right here to get registered instantly. Seriously, just click right here. This is an in-depth training that will help you close more sales at higher prices, all while generating more meetings. Also, if you've got some value, please like this video below on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking my little face right here to get access to a new video just like this one each week.